When everyone has an opinion about everything, what's the one thing that we can all agree on? Well, the answer is our love of movement and the Pilates method. And thanks to my guest today, we can all share in this as a community. I'm joined by Benjamin Degenhart, founder of 360 Pilates and creator of March Madness, the online event that happens every single year where participants, that's you by the way, share images and videos of the original mat exercises over the month of March. Listen in and find out how this got started, why it's so popular, and how you can get involved. Well, hi there. I'm Sarah Glanfield. I'm a business and marketing strategist just for boutique fitness studio owners like you. If you're ready to be inspired and make a bigger impact, you're in the right place. All you need are a few key strategies, the right mindset, and some support along the way. Join me as I share the real life insights that will help you grow a sustainable and profitable studio. This is the Pilates Business Podcast. So welcome back to the Pilates Business Podcast. I'm super excited today because I am thrilled to be joined by the one and only Benjamin Denghart, um, who is joining me today from Lisbon. Um, he's just recently moved and is getting settled into his new place over there. So welcome, Benjamin. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's uh, wonderful to get distracted from the moving pains. Right. <laughs> the boxes, about all the boxes. And talk about Pilates. And all about Pilates and all about March Madness. So it's right around the corner. Um, and I wanted to bring Benjamin on today to talk about all things Pilates and really all things March Madness, because this is something that has grown and grown and grown and something that I'm getting asked about a lot in terms of how can I participate? What should I do? Um, and I think that in, in, it's been a wonderful um, a wonderful movement to share our love of movement. And um, I would love for as many, many, many of, of, of our listeners to get involved in this because it's such a fun event to really highlight our love of the Pilates method and to really um, engage in our amazing community. And we're all, you know, we all do this because we, we love, we love Pilates, right? Um, but before we dive into all of those good things, Benjamin, why don't you share a little bit about, you know, how you came into the Pilates world, uh, your background and so on. Um, first of all, because I will try to share, but I will miss some of the really important things. So why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about <laughs> how you got Absolutely. started? Absolutely, yeah. So um, I'm born and raised in Germany. I first came into contact with Pilates during my dance training. Very familiar story to a lot of people, I'm sure. Um, I've been a student of Pilates since 1998, a teacher since 2004, and I suppose a teacher of teachers since about 2011, and then started my own company called 360 Pilates in 2013. Um, and yeah, I, I, th I think this is a mostly familiar story to a lot of people. Um, Pilates became my lifeline as a performing artist, um, helped me through injury and was always this tool in my pocket that I really wanted to own and understand better. And, you know, it, it, it's a path that led to wanting to share it with others as well. Um, my, I, th I think what's unique about my background was that at the time in the late 90s in Europe, Pilates wasn't really much of a thing. So there was no formal way to become a teacher or, um, you know, get involved professionally unless you were to fly to New York and, and do the training there. And, and that's all I knew at the time. So my, my original upbringing, if you will, was very much old school apprenticeship and just mirroring my teachers. And then, you know, little by little starting to assist a little bit here and there and stretch that client or, you know, take over for that one exercise or what have you, um, and sort of organically grew into it through this barter system of I'm young, I'm a dancer, I can't afford Pilates, so let me work at the studio in order to afford my training. <laughs> right. And over the years, it, it, the, the work really just kind of like fell into my pocket, so to speak, and, and became something that I really wanted to formally train in. And then, you know, the rest is history. 
um, did yeah. my training in New York and kind of never left the U.S. after that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah Funny Pilates how that has become my, <laughs> exactly, Pilates has become my career and, and certainly my life. Yeah. And so you, you mentioned you, your, um, you founded uh, 360 Pilates in 2013 and that was predominantly, was that online, all online initially or was it, it was not, okay. Tell no, 2013, um, I think our relationship with the internet was still very different from what it is today. So the idea of online training and all of that was still very, very foreign. What was um, starting to unfold right around that time was the rise of social media and the fact that our idea of community suddenly was very expansive because we could connect with people through Facebook. Instagram was sort of in its infancy at the time, but all of a sudden there were these online forums where we could connect with like-minded professionals around the world. And there were a lot of great things that happened. There were a lot of bad things that happened in terms of how we interacted online because nobody really knew the etiquette yet. Right. <laughs> and I, you know, it's a different conversation to have. I'm not sure that we have the etiquette down now <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah. But um, you know, we'll we'll talk about that as we talk about March Madness, I'm sure. Um, initially, 360 Pilates was really just a moniker for the way that I looked at Pilates. I, you know, I was brought up in a very classical Romana lineage through uh, three teachers who were trained by Romana herself. <clears throat> and at the time, I didn't know what that meant. I thought Pilates was Pilates, who's Romana, never met her. Um, you know, I, I was a dancer. I, my it was not my main focus to become a Pilates expert or anything like that. So I took my training for granted in a way. And then fast forward to New York, I did a contemporary training because I didn't know the differences and it was the closest studio. And I figured, well, I'll just, I'll just do the training where it's convenient. And it took me a few years to catch up to this idea that there's this diversity in, in the work, in, in the way that it's interpreted. And um, the idea of 360 Pilates was this idea of, me coming full circle in my own understanding of the work by taking all the different experiences I've had in the classical training and the contemporary training and more clinical approaches and going through historical research, which I've done right around the time I became a teacher trainer to then tie it all together. Um, so 360 has gone through a lot of different iterations. It was a workshop program initially. I wanted to build it out into a teacher training at some point. Uh, then it became a continuing education six month program. And then I started creating an online platform to deliver the work, thankfully pre pandemic. And it has changed a lot throughout the pandemic when all of a sudden everybody was online in some way, shape or form. Um, but it's yeah, 360 really stands for the perspective and not so much for the delivery model, if that makes sense. Um, and I know it'll go through a lot more evolution as time goes on. Right. And as all businesses do, really, you know, and as we we're all evolving and adapting, not just to the environment, you know, pandemic or not, not, but also with as we all are evolving and growing professionally and personally and, and to the needs of what we see um, others needing as well. So it's, um, yeah, business evolves and, and, and it's good to hear. And it's interesting to hear your journey in that online world, because, you know, this is something that has now become almost the norm for so many studio owners. And it's such a bigger part of where our focus lies um, as, as teachers, as studio owners now in so many different ways. It's, it, you know, being present online, having, not just having a website, right? It's about having a website and potentially even having online classes or an on-demand platform or an app or, you know, and having a presence on Instagram and how to do that. Right. And so there's, it's just, it's so much more today than it was even, you know, back in 2013, when it was, we were starting out, even if you were building an online business, there's just so many more ways to be visible online and be active in the digital space than ever before. And it's almost, there's almost, it's, it's, uh, I think for sometimes it can get overwhelming because there's almost so many different things you could do and trying to figure out which is going to be the right, uh, path for you or as for your business and what you're looking to achieve is, is challenging. And that's kind of often why we, 
we kind of, we kind of, um, you know, one of the reasons we continue to evolve because you might want to try some new things and see how that goes. And if it doesn't work, then you can kind of go in a different direction, or if it continues to work, you can add and evolve that, that direction too. So yeah, that's really interesting to hear. Thank you. I didn't, um, I, I love your holistic approach to, uh, to Pilates. I think it's, uh, it's much needed as is what you're doing and what you've done with March Madness, which is, I think you how you know you've 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 given power to um, being online in a very positive way for our industry. So how I really kind of want to know like when and how did that kind of get started? Where where did the was it something? Did you did you come at it with this idea that it would be what it is today, or was it something you just did for fun? Was it some you know how did it get started? It was complete happenstance and just a weird ton of things coming together on a February 28th in 2012 or 13. I Now I'm getting confused. I think it was 2013. It was the day before March 1st. And I, I had this practice of sending out a newsletter to my mailing list of 12 people at the time um, and mirror that on my Facebook page that had like, I don't know, 29 followers perhaps. <laughs> Um, you know, again, we were still very much in the infancy of doing all these marketing things online and I, I was just dabbling at it. So there I am sitting at my laptop in Boston at the time, trying to write a newsletter for March 1st, the day after. And I'm just piggybacking on something I said earlier. I, at the time, you know, I was a teacher trainer for a, a national company in the U S um, providing teacher training. I was, um, overseeing the growth of many new apprentices at the time. And they were all starting to participate in these online forums um, on Facebook specifically and feeling very disempowered by the noise that happened in there. And I really felt the same thing. And there was something about that moment in time where I felt like I, I want to start a conversation about just the work, not the he said, she said, not the contemporary versus classical, not the... Um, you know, not giving unsolicited advice or judgment on people's training backgrounds or trying to play this one up game online that was kind of happening at the time. Um, and just talk about something that we can all agree on. And to me, that was always Return to Life Through Contrology. That's a book that we can all agree it was written by the man. It's exercise we all teach. Maybe we don't agree with all of them, but let's take this as a departure point to talk about the work in a constructive, productive, and positive and empowering manner. That was my <laughs> glorious idea, the evening of February 28th. And I had this folder of images, still images sitting on my computer as well that I took a few months before. Um, I was on vacation. I was practicing Pilates and I just had an iPhone. I was late to the iPhone game in 2013, but I had it and I filmed my practice so I can self-correct. And the background just happened to be really pretty. So I took screenshots of every exercise and I was like, okay, if I want to have this conversation online, why don't I post a picture every single day and use that as a departure point as in like, let's talk about the original book and how it's described there. Why don't we do the hundred exactly as it is in the book? Where did the tabletop come from? All of these things were not really discussed at the time. There are a lot more mainstream ideas now. <laughs> yeah. Even though the book's been out for what, 60 something years? <laughs> yeah. 80. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, it, it all just kind of like came together this idea of, okay, March 1st, I'm going to post the 100. We're going to talk about the 100. March 2nd, I'm going to talk about the roll up. And it'll all happen on my Facebook page. And what are we going to call it? Matt. Matt of Palooza, March, March Madness. It, it just, just all kind of came together in one short minute and the newsletter went out and every single day people started chiming in on this conversation that was had. But it was all me. <laughs> it was my picture. It was my Facebook page. And I, I was a little overwhelmed with the amount of people that started to come and follow the page and add commentary, you know, positive, negative, what have you, but constructive conversations were had around the work. And before the month was over, um, somebody said, oh, you should definitely do this again next year. And I immediately said, no, 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 no. I, I am not going to do this again next year, but we can do this again next year. And 
April 1st of 2013 was when I started thinking about what could this be because this was fun. It was positive. It was useful. And um, I, I think this has legs to stand on. So I took two years to kind of experiment with different formats. In 2014, March Madness was sort of a, a curated blog with guest um, ambassadors that you know, would provide content all month long. It was all about the math work. It was all about the home practitioner. It was all about just the exercises, nothing else. And then, you know, by 2015, Instagram became more of a thing and it was visual. And it seemed like the perfect vehicle to just go like, you know what, let's, let's just all flood the internet with our own practice of this. And it has to be nothing more, nothing less. You can wear a crazy costume or just do it while you're, I don't know, moving apartments. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's just show the world what these, what this source code, right? The map being the source code of Pilates looks like and why it's irrelevant today and and so forth. So it, it just kind of then took a life of its own. And it's really a community-led project at this point. Um, I still get a lot of credit for it, but I can't really take it because it's it's not like I'm the conductor who announces every year like okay you now may post your pilates pictures it's <laughs> it's almost turned into like i i sometimes think it's kind of like halloween it's not a question right. of like is halloween going to happen it's more like what are you going to wear <laughs> right and i love that and march madness in a way has become that too where it's even if people don't participate i think there's a lot of joy in just seeing others get excited about the work and it's it's sort of having this ripple effect, whether people actively participate or not. And, you know, with very few exceptions, it's just been one of the only times and the only events that I see that is completely positively received and participated in. Um, there's no, you know, nobody makes money off of March Madness. There's no merchandise. There's, you know, it's by design, not a contest or competition or a challenge, even though people love a contest and a challenge it's it's just here take it or leave it here's a hashtag it's 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 trending for the month of march use it meet some people um you know stand by the snack table and just watch or you know get in the thick of it get on the dance floor and, and make this party fun in your own way and you know every year it's grown a little bit and every year i am amazed with how many people I recognize from that first time nine years ago and how many new people come into the fold that may not even know where it came from and think it's a weird name that makes no sense. And yeah, yeah, I didn't think of it that way <laughs> nine right. years ago. I didn't think it was going to become a thing. So here we well, are. I, I mean, I think it's amazing that, you know, we, we, that the, it's evolved in the way that it has, but I'm, I think it's, it's in, um, a huge testament to you and, and, you know, how you think about it, that, you know, you are, it is a truly become a community led, um, event and, you know, I, how, um, in a world that has become increasingly divisive over all sorts of things that we, as an industry can come together as a community can really come together and share in the love of this work, which is truly we the thing that we are all here to do and and the, how much we enjoy that movement and that method and how um and how you know we can share in that with each other um and that we care about this together and and and, and that is a really wonderful wonderful thing and i love to see my social media be flooded with um with all of those images and videos um of march madness every single march and i think that it truly is so incredibly inspiring to see all the, that movement and the energy and the joy that people find in this movement. So it's, it's, it's incredible. So thank you for starting this. And I know that it sounds, you know, you didn't start it with any intention of it becoming anything, but it has done. And so for that, I, you know, I thank you, uh, for all of it. And, um, I want to kind of go and now and talk a little bit about, um, how, you how people can kind of get involved and um what you enjoy seeing uh, when you see people get involved um what what how, what's the you know as as a teacher and as or as a, as a studio owner who is busy teaching and busy um and uh, you know perhaps social media isn't kind of the most favorite thing in the world to be doing um what how do you how, how do you what do you kind of kind of how do you help people get involved and participate 
Yeah, I, th I think the number one thing in, in what it's provided people with, and I think one of the reasons that it's become so successful in a way, and so many people feel like they can easily jump on board, even if they're social media averse in their everyday life, or, you know, can't really fathom the idea of posting every single day, let alone a picture of themselves perhaps doing the work and, and talking about something that, you know, they didn't even create necessarily. But um, at the same time, I think the fact that there is a blueprint of here is what I can post about for 30 days and I can do as little or as much as I want, but I know that I'm going to be part of a current. Um, I might meet some people along the way and I don't have to think, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I'm yeah. March 1st, 100, March 2nd, roll up. Um, the only thing that's difficult about that is figuring out what date is what exercise because 34 exercises, 31 days. Ah. Um, we have a small, small problem. So tell us just a... real quick, how do we do that exactly? What are we, what's hanging out, you know, you, Jedi kind of things is happening with the, with the calendar month there where we fit 34 exercise into 31 days. There's two ways you can go about it. The easiest one is to go to marchmathness.com and look at the calendar. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's I like that answer. Every year, and it's always the same one. Um, the you know trickier one is to follow what people are posting, um, which is really dicey because people that participate participate anywhere between Hawaii and Sydney or New Zealand even. <laughs> right. So, so um, there's a slight mismatch sometimes and um, it, it really stresses me out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's not the exercise of the day. But yeah. also then, and this is the third one, it doesn't really matter. You know, just, just get involved and um, throw yourself in there. There is a logic to how exercises are consolidated. We have like, um, you know, the scissors and bicycle, bicycle are on the same day, seal and crab, you know, like yeah. cousins of exercises usually share a day with each other um, in the same way that they usually share airtime in a class. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So you you match scissors and bicycle are, and crab and seal are the two that are joined up to make it so we can fit it nice and neatly into 31 days of March. Exactly. Yes. And there's one other one, but that I can and there's think another of right one. now. Um, I love um, the leg pulls, the leg, leg pulls. pulls. Yeah. Front and back. That's it. That's right. So tell me a little bit about how, you know, cause I know a lot of people, I get the feedback that not specific to March Madness, but that they often feel like they, f it has to be perfect for it to be on social media. So for all the people who feel kind of like, Oh, I'm not quite, I'm not in a, I'm not able to do it as best as I could or have been able to do in the past. And I'm worried about putting these things out there online. And how would, would you address those sorts of concerns for people? Yeah, that, that's a really valid and interesting concern to have, right? Because it, it is by and large to the way that most of us consume social media is, is visual first. Um, we, you know, we decide whether we want to read the caption based on whether the image caused any confrontation or interest in us, et cetera, stirred any emotions up. And then we decide to read the text below. And sometimes we just skim it and move past it, um, which, of course, for those of us that want to create content that should be consumed in its entirety is a bummer. But that's the, the, the nature of the game. Um, I think, especially over the last couple of years, you know, social media has become a lot more forgiving in terms of, you know, just make yourself seen, just participate in the conversation. Um, you know, we have a lot more bandwidth right now to focus on each other and, and learn from each other and also a lot more hunger and thirst and desire to do so. Um, so in that way, I, I think it, it relieves some of that pressure very specifically, and we haven't announced it yet, but you heard it here first. Um, my company, 360 Pilates, typically sponsors um, what we call a caption theme for March Madness because, you know, I've, I know that a lot of people post their March Madness way in advance or plan it way in advance. They tell me, like, oh, I just did my March Madness photo shoot in September. And <laughs> Wow, that's planning. You know, you and I are talking two weeks before uh, <laughs> the end of the month, and I still have no idea if or what I'm going to post. Um, but this year, the caption theme actually 
and the captures theme being the idea that no matter what your pictures are, let's unite in you know what we write about, so that we you know have at least if if you have nothing that comes to mind, you can participate in this. And again, you can't win a prize. There's none of that. There's no cake at the end, no reward. Um, but you know, here's some help to to get you started and get inspired. And the caption theme this year is Pilates here and now, and it's it's really all about you know drop stop and do Pilates. Um, you know, I'll probably do it in between moving boxes and <laughs> unbuilt furniture. Um, it's this idea of you know how because I've had this conversation a lot over the last few years. Um, how is Pilates, especially traditional, original, classical Pilates? relevant today and it's something that as teachers and business owners we face every single day in every conversation that we have relevance is a huge word in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to communicate to the larger public whether that's our clients or fellow teachers colleagues staff members what have you um so this year very specifically is about it, it, it it's it's a snapshot in time and as somebody who has done March Madness nine years at this point, um, I, I really appreciate every single year as having become this time capsule of where's the community at this year? What are people talking about? I have this really beautiful perspective on where people are at in their lives. Um, I recognize a lot of people and I see them improve over the years um, and, and not necessarily in terms of production value or even exercise execution or whatever but in terms of confidence in terms of wisdom shared in terms of generosity and that is such a beautiful thing to witness and you know especially in 2020 you know we all know what happened in march of 2020 <laughs> um it it sort of unfolded throughout that month and it it ended up being a really nice through line for people to actually exchange information with each other under the guise of a Pilates conversation. And it, it sort of implied to me this idea that, yeah, nothing is going as planned right now, but we are still in this together. And we don't need a pandemic to have that feeling, right? So this idea of hiding because of self-perceived imperfection or I mean, isn't that the fun of Pilates that it's never going to be perfect, right? Yeah. First of all. <laughs> I think so. I you think know, what, so. What Every day is different. You, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't it's, matter what I try to do. <laughs> it's just always different. And there's always something. And it's a growth. It's a journey. It's never without, without, you know, it's an ongoing journey. It's, yeah. And, and, it, and that's you know, the fun of it. <laughs> isn't that the fun of it? And, and honestly, I mean, not to diss Mr. Pilates, but, you know, part of the original inspiration behind March Madness 2 was um, I just got my hands on a first edition of Return to Life that I found on eBay. And I was blown away by the picture quality in the original book compared to the version that I have gotten when I first bought it in the early 2000s, which seemed like the photographs were copies of a fax of a copy <laughs> right yes <laughs> and i could barely make out any details so for the first time i see this crisp photography and i'm just getting a complete nerd attack and at the same time the closer i look the more i was also like you know being a greener teacher at the time i was starting to get obsessed with all the things that i all of a sudden felt joseph pilates was doing wrong the hands were in the wrong place his ribs were poking out his belly was not drawn in and i was just like how did he photograph this and put it in a book but um it it was the perfect sort of excuse to also use it as a way to showcase like this is what it looks like when a human being does these exercises and it Yes, you can rehearse it to perfection, but you can also just showcase it the way that it manifests in your body on that day, in that moment. If you took the same picture the next day, it'll hopefully be different. And that's the beauty of this. So I, I think always having stayed in that spirit with March Madness, that it's not a competition, that it's not about who has the most beautiful photographs or let's reward the best technique. It was never about that. It was more like, hey, let's... How do you do your hundred? <laughs> what does yeah. that look like? Right. Do you need any help? Um, yeah. You're awesome. I love what you're doing with the work. I love how you interpret that exercise. I've never thought about it this way. Yada, da, 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 the list goes on. Um, I, I hope that as, as the campaign continues, because again, at this point, I think I could, I could tell people tomorrow, like March Madness is not going to happen this year and it will still happen because it's a lot of 
so <laughs> as, as it continues, I hope that spirit will remain um, so that at least for the month of March, we can go into this barrier that a lot of us have with more confidence and just, you know, move. Just I'm just going to throw myself in the mix. Uh, people are having fun with it. Um, and, you know, there's there's also the fact that March is so overwhelming when it comes to March Madness that, you know, it, it probably slips through the cracks. If you make a misstep, it'll it'll be forgotten three days later. <laughs> That's the beauty of it too, in a way. So, and I'm saying that because I I think just experimenting with the discipline of what it's going to take to post 30 days in a row when you're hesitant about doing so, I think you're going to learn so much about yourself, about the way that you can communicate, about the way that you can actually be social on social media. Um, and yeah, meet a few people along the way and maybe get your message out in a way that otherwise wouldn't be possible. So I highly recommend just getting over that hurdle um, and using March as a jump board. There's it, it re- and it, and it's open to everybody. Everyone can participate. You don't have to be a teacher or a superstar teacher or a master teacher or an advanced teacher or any of those things. You can be a Pilates lover and just want to, to share your movement a practice and the, the Pilates method that you, the way that you, you know, you bring Pilates into your world and share that for sure. And that's all, that's, it's about bringing everyone together and sharing that love of the Pilates method. And that's all there is to it. And no one is, you know, it is not, is not there for anyone to be judging others. There's no competition. There's no, um, you don't get a medal at the end. Like you said, there's no ribbons, there's no cake, there's no, no nothing, but there is just a celebration of this movement, which we all know and love. Um, and so I love that you've put this, this opportunity together for us all to participate in and to, to celebrate what we, what, all, what we do and this amazing, um, the amazing method and, the, and, and how amazing we're all going to feel at the end of, you know, 30 days, knowing that we've done maybe a little bit of movement every day. Um, I think that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I love it. Um, so people want to, if people want to get involved, um, they can go and find you at March Madness online, um, Google all the places or just go to Instagram and you'll see it. Um, and then on there, you will, people will be told how to participate and share, but there's a hashtag involved and all those good things. And, and you can find out all about, more about that. I'm going to pop it all in the show notes as well for everybody. Um, now, but before we leave, this episode, Benjamin, I kind of want to know how you are going to, you know, how you're going to be kind of planning your days in March to, uh, to, to make sure that you have time to, to, to do each of these exercises and post them. Do you kind of have a set and generally speak, do you have a set time? You kind of move your body every day. Uh, you kind of, uh, how do you kind of, how are you kind of going to manage and plan for that? That is a really good question, especially now as I'm in the midst of a huge transition with, you know, apartment and and such. Um, So I I think the caption theme Pilates here now is very much born out of my own inability to plan in advance. Um, But yeah, I I usually have a midday practice. Um, You know, I running an online platform means I I have now become, you know, my stereotypical client back from my full-time teaching days where I sit at the desk most of the day. So I'm um, breaking it up in the middle is, is my favorite way to do that. Um, in the evening, I usually don't have the energy and just take a walk. But March is a very interesting beast for me because as much as I don't think that I am the conductor of March Madness any longer or need to take that role, I very much still appreciate all the, you know, love that I get throughout that month, all the tags that I get, all the mentions, all the, um, you know, attention that is brought to to my work throughout that month. And so I see myself very much in the role of a cheerleader. So in addition to participating, I usually end up with an overuse injury of my thumb at the end of the month, just from <laughs> scrolling and liking and emojiing and Typically, I do that three times a day for 45 minutes each session to cover all the time zones and make sure that everybody who participates at one point or another got some attention back. Um, So that becomes part of my practice throughout the month of March as well. But somewhere in there, I'll also do some Pilates and um, you'll, you'll see it 
online. <laughs> oh, I'm super excited for it. And I know that everybody listening is going to be excited to get involved and to see and to move and to and to share as well. So thank you for all that you've done for our community. Um, I could keep asking you all sorts of amazing questions about Pilates and, and all of the things that you're involved in and, and business and all of that, but we will save that for another day, um, I think. And, and we will preparing ourselves, preparing ourselves for March Madness and um, be excited to see everyone's faces on March 1st. Thank you so much for having me. This was wonderful. And yeah, I'll see you all in March. Fantastic. Did you love this episode and want more? Head to spring3.com and check out my free resources that will help you run a profitable and fulfilling studio business. And before you go, one last reminder, there is no one way to do what you do, only your way. So whatever it is that you want to do, create or offer, you've got this. Thanks again for joining me today and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.